By all means, <laughs> kick my psychic butt. Well, hey there, guys. I'm Axel the Beast, and this is the Curiosity Shop, the ZeldaEngine.net video mailbag where I answer your Zelda questions. Our first question comes from Gabacore. Do you think Nintendo will surprise us with a 2D Zelda for the 3DS? You know, I actually do think that this is a distinct possibility, which, of course, means no. It, I don't think they will surprise us, or they won't surprise me anyway. Kidding. Um, I think that there is some very decent possibility of a 2D Zelda game. I mean, I mean, Miyamoto has talked about how he wants to do something like A Link to the Past, but not a remake. Um, but he's, you know, I just, you know, I don't know. I think that the, uh, I've talked before about how I think that they should bring back the 2D, you know, gameplay format eventually, and I think it's inevitable that they will. I think now seems like an interesting time to do it. Like, if they're doing an HD game on the Wii U, and then they do, like, a, a sprite-based classic-style game in addition to it, I think that's, that's a good combination. I think there's just a decent possibility that that's what they're doing, for sure. Um, Zelda Fever 98 asks, You've said that you wouldn't mind having the next Zelda game on the 3DS be a sequel to Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks with the same type of gameplay, but with transportation in the sky. I think a World War One type plane with a cannon would work really well. What do you think? Well, you know, I talked about this before. I think it was before the 3DS was even announced. I'm not sure on that. That was, like, mailbag number one, if I recall. Um, at which point I said that, a, like, a hot air balloon would be the best kind of transportation for Zelda, and I, I still think that that would be cool. Um, this was actually before Skyward Sword was even announced as a flying, you know, game. And uh, I think that with Skyward Sword, it, like, so with Skyward Sword, I don't think that there's much chance that there's going to be another flying game, at least not anytime soon. Um... Though, so I think the chances of them making The Legend of Zelda the hottest balloon, as I said in the first mailbag, uh, I think that's pretty slim, the chances of that. Zach Channel 1999 asks, In Majora's Mask, a lot of the characters are reused from Ocarina of Time. Do you think they did this on purpose or just got lazy? Well, you know, it's it's common, reasonably common knowledge by this point that the uh, world in Majora's Mask, Termina, is proven to be a alternate dimension, alternate parallel world of Hyrule from Ocarina of Time. Uh, so that would be the in-game story reason why they have reused the characters. As for the game design, though, that's actually still a very valid question, and it's something that I've considered in the past, too. I think that ultimately they wanted to make a game that was a lot like Ocarina of Time and didn't really want to expand off it, so some laziness, although that's not the word I'd use, uh, cutting corners, maybe, uh, a design decision, maybe, I don't think I would call it laziness. At the same time, they may have actually had the dimension thing in mind, or perhaps they came up with it later to explain the cutting corner thing. I, I don't know, it's something that you can't really come up with an answer with unless you actually ask Nintendo or get some insight into the game design process. But, you know, I, I don't think it's usually a good idea to go around calling the developers lazy, Except sometimes when they're obviously completely lazy, like, there's there are definitely examples of that, like, I don't know, freaking uh, not including a left-handed option in Skyward Sword, or flipping the entire world in Twilight Princess instead of giving Link, just making Link use his right hand. I don't know, that does, that's, that's lazy, so maybe I just completely contradicted myself. Either way, um, next question. Uh, Zelda characters, so I guess a bunch of Zelda characters just got together and sent me a question, which is a, a mighty honor, but... Uh, Zelda Characters asks, What is the point of the Scarecrow song in Majora's Mask? Uh, the Scarecrow song is just like you input your own custom song. You know, There's a way to change it, but you, you put in your own song, and the game will recognize it, and it summons the Scarecrow in the future only on the, as Adult Link. Uh, and he will be a claw shot target. or <laughs> I said claw shot, wow. Hook shot target. Um, so you can, you know, get up to a higher ledge that you can't get up to without him. Uh, he appears to make it easier on you, though he's not required in the, the Gerudo Fortress. He also appears in the Dongo's Cavern in the Fire Temple, if you play the song in the right area. Generally, if Navi flies off and turns green in an empty area, it's probably where he'll appear. Though, not always, there's at least one case where that doesn't happen. Uh, there might be some other places I don't know about, but those are the ones I know about. Uh, Randomness asks... When I first played Ocarina of Time, one thing didn't make sense to me. Ganondorf. What's his story? Why is he green? What drove him to pure evil? Do you think Nintendo should have get, gone at least a little bit more into his character, by which I mean beyond twisted main bad guy? Um, you know, yeah, I think Zelda stories, that's the one thing that's the weakest about them, is the lack of details, the lack of explanation, the lack of, like, fleshing out of the elements of the world and the characters. That said, I think Ganondorf, uh, he wasn't, like, totally unexplained. He, they imply, they didn't directly say, but 
implied elements of his character, like Twinrova were his surrogate mothers, so there is implication, you know, that, that, that does tell you some about his backstory. He was raised by these evil freaking witches. Uh, the Wind Waker also gives insight into his backstory, as well as, you know, Skyward Sword. I'm not going to spoil anything, at least at this point in the mailbag, but, uh, yeah, there's there's some backstory stuff in Skyward Sword. So Ganondorf's really a character where his story is spread out a lot across the series, but it's still simple, and I do somewhat agree with you. I mean, Zelda has its advantages in being a simple story. There, there are advantages to that, but I don't think it executes it as well, and that is definitely one of the weaker points. Ganondorf is a simple, kind of Saturday morning villain sometimes. Saturday morning cartoon villain. So, I don't know. It goes both ways on this, I guess. Uh, Nicholas Beatroz... Be Beatro... Beatroz... Uh, everybody's Russian! Uh, asks, My friend says Skyward Sword is the last Zelda game because it was the last one that they needed to fit the timeline because it showed how the Master Sword was made. Um... There's no way Skyward Sword is the last Zelda game. They're blatantly talking about making more Zelda games, so yeah, it's not the last. Uh, uh, maybe, uh, yeah, just no. Spurson270 asks, did, did you find the imprisoned boss fight overused and annoying? I actually didn't because it scared the crap out of me. I actually thought it was like a very tense, uh, alarming fight, and I thought it was really fun. I mean, it was simple, it was brief, so I, I had trouble getting annoyed at it. Uh, and they uh, they introduced a couple new things each time, and it just was a very interesting, at least cinematic, set-piece moment, if not a really interesting battle. And I just thought it was good to have the overworld boss. I know that it's, it's like common to find him really annoying, but I never did. I just thought he was kind of scary, kind of freaking adorable at the same time, and... Uh, just an interesting fight. Maybe not really like a great fight, but an interesting one anyway. And he was, he really was freaking adorable though. Um, uh, I actually have no idea what this is here. He says his forum name is Axel the Beast Curiosity Shop, but the other name is Fi's Biggest Fan. So I'm going to go with that. Fi's Biggest Fan asks, do you think there's a chance we will ever see Fi return in another, in another Zelda game? Well, you know, I think that there's some possibility that she'll show up again, that they'll decide to like have some kind of storyline where she reawakens or pops up or whatever, you know? Uh, that said, you know, I don't think it's going to be for, like, a really long time. They don't re really reuse the uh, the partners in the Zelda games. Even Navi didn't come back. I mean, she was, like, recreated in Tattle and even in Cielic, honestly. But they still made a new character for it. And I don't really think that that's going to change. I don't think we're going to, like, start seeing partners very often, like, repeat partners. But Fi might, because she's kind of important, but I don't think that it's going to be anytime soon, at least, just because of the tradition with the partners. And if she did, you know it was going to, it would, like, make a bunch of people freak out, and even more than now, send me tons of questions about why, why she wasn't in all the other games, when blah 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 blah, even though, of course, she wasn't invented yet. Winter Cheerleader 143 asks, do you think we will ever actually see Demise in another, in another Zelda game? Uh, you know, similar story, uh... Well, not necessarily similar for the same reasons, though. Uh, I, I don't think we're going to see him anytime soon, but uh, he is an important character, kind of. So, yeah, maybe. I think it's more likely we'll be seeing references to him and references to, you know, the nature of what happens at the end of the game, you know, with, with him and his re potential relationship with Ganon and, uh, like, other incarnations of Demise across the timeline. I, I mean, maybe sometime it'll just... he'll become Demise himself again, maybe. But arguably, even the form we saw was just how Link was perceiving him, because it literally says he like appears different for every single person in every era. So who even knows if that was like his true form? So yeah, maybe, but it'd be kind of you know way later. All right, last question. Sir Ursus asks, "Why was the windfish in an egg? Was the first time he ever came out when Link awakened him? And how did all the Islanders know that you needed the instruments to awaken him? It would only make sense if the windfish was out of the egg before, but how?" Uh, spoiler alert! But, uh, all of Koholin Island is a dream. The Windfish is a dream. He is asleep, uh, the, whatever, even though waking him from the egg is arguably just not actually happening, because it's a dream. So, the Islanders know because the Windfish didn't do some kind of weird inner psyche thing where he tricked himself. He, that didn't happen. So, he actually knew he was dreaming and was trying to tell you to wake him up. Which begs the question of th as to why he didn't wake himself up. So, I've answered your question while simultaneously making you ask more. I think. Maybe. Maybe I just answered your question. Alright, that's it for this time. Be sure to send your questions to the email address in the description. And I'll see you guys later.